Hello everyone. My name is Jose Luis Arieta Concha and I am a fellow at the Assembly, Packaging and Systems Integration Division of CTI Renato Archer. Today, I will present to you my work on the optimization of spin coding parameters and developer exposure for the AZP4620 photoresist. As background for this study, we must acknowledge that photoresist coding is a crucial step in photolithography and, as such, the thickness of the photoresist coding affects the resolution and quality of the patterns to be transferred. In our cleanroom facilities, we use AZP4620 photoresist, which is a positive tone photoresist that becomes soluble when exposed to UV light. However, we found that the default spinning program for this photoresist gave us inconsistent thickness results. Therefore, we decided to optimize the spin coating process and achieve more controlled thicknesses. The objectives of this work are as follows. To characterize the influence of the various process variables on the quality and thickness of the AZP4620 photoresist coating such as temperature, quantity, spin coating parameters and developer exposure. To find the optimal UV dose and development time for fabricating micro and nano structures while evaluating the lithography process design limits when using AZP4620 photoresist in our cleanroom facilities. The methodology of this work consists of three experiments, each addressing one of the objectives. The experiments are as follows. Experiment 1, Study of AZP4620 Photoresist Thickness. This experiment measured the thickness of the photoresist coating using a DECTAC profilometer after spin coating, baking, and developing processes. The experiment varied the quantity of photoresist, spinning with and without a spread time, and temperature of the resist. Experiment 2, Adjustment of the Parameters for Lithography Using AZP4620 Photoresist This experiment varied the dose, focus, and development time of the photoresist and observed the resulting structures using optical microscopy and DECTAC measurements. Experiment 3, Characterization of AZ400K development time for photolithography with AZP4620 photoresist. This experiment varied the quantity of developer, development time, developer reuse, and temperature. In this slide, we can see the results of experiment 1 for different quantities of photoresist applied on the wafers. We used three levels of initial coating, 50%, 70%, and 100% of the wafer area. We also used four different spinning programs, without spread at 21 degrees Celsius, without spread at 10 degrees Celsius, with spread for 5 seconds at 21 degrees Celsius, and with developer exposure. The table shows the minimum, maximum, average, and mean deviation values for each wafer. From these results, we can draw the following conclusions. Counterintuitively, the average thickness of the coating decreases with an increase of initial photoresist poured in the substrate. The wafers with 50% initial coating have an average thickness of 5.49 micrometers, while the wafers with 70% and 100% initial coating have an average thickness of 5.26 micrometers and 5.21 micrometers, respectively. The presence of a spread time in the spinning program has shown to marginally improve the uniformity of the coating and reduce thickness variation across different wafers. However, more tests would be necessary to verify this. The temperature of the resist had a very small effect on the coating process and resulting thickness. Wafers coated with cold resist showed a slight increase in thickness compared to those coated with room temperature resist. The experiment did not observe any significant resist stripping effect when wafers were directly exposed to the developer without lithography. However, resist uniformity was improved after exposing the resist to the developer which implies that small quantities of resist has been stripped from the rough areas. In this slide, we can see some images of wafers exposed to different doses of UV light ranging from 100 to 400 millijoules per square centimeter. The images show how the photoresist sensitization varies depending on the dose and the type of features on the design. We can see that lower doses result in superficial photoresist sensitization on every feature, while higher doses result in complete photoresist sensitization but also overexposure that makes small features begin to disappear or lose shape. In this slide, 
we can see a table that summarizes the results of experiment 2 for different doses and focus corrections. The table shows the percentage of photoresist removal and the perceived quality of the photolithography for the lines and rectangles on the wafers. We used a mask design with lines and rectangles of different widths, ranging from 0.5 micrometers to 20 micrometers. From these results, we can draw the following conclusions. The lithography with a dose of 200 mJ is the lower limit for completely sensitizing the photoresist, but the results vary depending on the focus and the type of design or features. The sensitization of the photoresist is complete above 250 mJ, but very small features, less than 2 micrometers, tend to disappear, and other thin structures below 5 micrometers lose detail due to overexposure. A focus correction within the range of minus 2 micrometers to plus 2 micrometers demonstrates satisfactory resolution at an energy dosage of 250 mJ. Given that 0 micrometers represents the median value within this range, it is proposed as the optimal value for this particular experiment. However, it is advisable to conduct a more comprehensive investigation with a reduced focus step to ascertain the most effective setting. This recommendation is particularly pertinent for the default spin coating speed utilized in this study, which is 7000 RPM. This speed results in an estimated film thickness of approximately 5.5 micrometers. A longer development time may help to remove the photoresist sensitized with lower doses, allowing finer designs without loss of sharpness due to under- or overexposure. Structures with widths of 10 micrometers seem to be well defined in the study range, but a more detailed analysis is needed to determine the best dose and focus that define them. In this slide, we can see a table showing the results for wafers developed under different conditions. We used AZ400K developer, which is a diluted solution of potassium hydroxide. We varied the quantity of developer, development time, developer reuse, and temperature. We also used a mask with a square design of 50 and 100 square millimeters. From these results, we can draw some conclusions. Photoresist removal rate varied based on the quantity, reuse, and expiration date of the developer solution. Optimal conditions, lower quantity, 25 milliliters, of fresh, non-expired developer solution at 23 degrees Celsius with 5 minutes of development time. Reuse impact, developer solution loses its effectiveness eventually but it seems that reusability is possible in small batches. Future work, investigate other factors like more temperature ranges and agitation of the developer solution. Perform advanced statistical analysis to identify potential correlations or trends. To summarize, we have achieved the following conclusions. The optimal parameters for lithography using AZP4620 photoresist spin coated at 7000 RPM, which yields an estimated thickness of 5.5 micrometers, are a dose of 250 mJ per square centimeter and a focus correction of 0 micrometers. The optimal quantity of AZ400K developer for a 2-inch silicon wafer is 25 milliliters, which should be used for 5 minutes at 23 degrees Celsius. The developer solution should be fresh and not reused or expired. The developer should be agitated gently and uniformly to avoid uneven development. The thickness of the AZP4620 photoresist coating can be mainly controlled by varying the spinning program. Lesser influence is noticed by adjusting the quantity of photoresist or the temperature of it. A spread step can improve the uniformity of the coating. When fabricating a more complex design using the optimized lithography parameters for our process, we found out that there are still reproducibility issues which have to be further studied. In consequence additional experiments to study the contrast curve of the photoresist have been carried out by other lab colleagues. I would like to thank ZANPK for their financial support as well as CTI Renato Archer for providing me with the facilities and equipment to conduct this research. I would also like to thank my supervisor Ricardo Cotrenteixeira for his guidance in this project and my lab colleagues for their assistance throughout this work. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me at jose.arieta at cti.gov.br. 
Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.